Well, I'm back. Did you miss me? Yes. That's right, folks. I'm back with another GTA car review. But what's this? Where's the lovely beaches of Vespucci? Or the rolling hills of Grapeseed? Well, folks, we've left San Andreas for a little vacation to a city only known as Liberty City. A shining beacon to some, and a cesspool of crime to others. That's all subjective, of course. I'll be doing some reviews on some GTA 4 specific cars. Basically cars that were huge in GTA 4, but unfortunately didn't make the cut to 5. Our first car on deck is this. 1987 Dinka Hakumai. This car is extraordinary. This car has a, a hold on me. Even when I'm not in motion, or when I'm driving through liberty. By the way, before I begin this episode, I do not have any mods installed on GTA 4, and I have no idea how to use the, how to record clips properly with GTA 4 because there isn't really like a thingy that shows you when I'm, when I'm recording clips. So I may or may not be using actual game footage I captured myself in this video. And probably future videos because for some reason I can only record clips of about seven seconds unless I turn down the traffic density to like nothing so just letting you know that the, the quality might be a little bit the quality of the footage might be a bit uh, bit toned down a bit from previous videos so just letting you know that guys okay so, I want to say right off the bat, this is one of my favorite cars in the game. And this is also one of my favorite front-wheel drive cars as well. Because, believe it or not, GTA 4 is kind of lacking on front-wheel drive cars. Out of 123 cars in this game, only 6 are front-wheel drive. Also, front-wheel drive cars in GTA 4 tend to act a bit funny as far as handling. This is mostly due to the game's semi-realistic handling model and the cars themselves. In GTA 4 you feel a sense of speed and weight driving a car, but enough about how good the physics are. Let's talk about the Hakumai. The Hakumai is exclusive to GTA 4, so unfortunately there is no history about the car. However, because it's made by Dinka, it does share a lot of the traits of the Blessed Combat, including its peppy engine and good handling. The Hakumai, which funnily enough translates to the word rice in Japanese, is primarily based on a third generation Honda Accord and Honda Prelude, which arguably are two of my favorite generations for both platforms. Well, besides the fourth generation Accord, obviously. Um, the Accord could be had with several different engine options. For the US market, we only received the single overhead cam A series engines. The top trim LXI model, which by the way, the I, Hence for injection. Yes, you could get a carbureted Accord back in the, in the 80s. <laughs> uh, anyway, the top trim LSI, L LXI, LXI Accord could be had with a 120 horsepower 2 liter A20A engine. I'd like to think that the A series is kind of like the little brother to the F series from the, from the later CB and CD Accords, as well as the base model Preludes as well in later generations. Now, of course, on the opposite end of the ocean, the Japanese received a 1.8 liter A18 engine for the single cam engine, and the much more sought after B18 and B20A engines for the twin cam option. Kind of ironic seeing as the Accord was originally designed and developed for the American market, and by that point, most of them were designed in the US. Now, of course, there was Japanese imports from the US, funnily enough, and, of course, they still did make some from Japan as well. But, you know. I mean, it's it's probably all down to, like, taxes and stuff. And, you know, America don't, like, don't want to have to compete with the Japanese cars, I guess. I don't know. It's some stupid bullcrap, basically. <laughs> of course, for your drivetrains, you had a 4-speed automatic and a 5-speed manual for the optional drivetrains. There was also several different body styles offered as well, including a typical 4-door sedan two-door coupe, a three-door shooting brake style hatchback, otherwise known as the Accord Aero Deck. Of course, this is only offered in Japan and Europe only. 
and the Aero Deck name would be carried over to the 4th generation CB9 Accord wagon as well as the European only EK Civic wagon as well, or the Estate if you want to sound fancy. My favorite body style of course is the hatchback, because it's basically a front wheel drive 86. Most folks will probably confuse it for an 86 as well, I mean, it makes sense. It seems to have borrowed a lot of styling from the 86 and it has a very similar wheelbase as well so I, I wouldn't be surprised if I had one someone would miss you know misinterpret it for an 86 or a Corolla GTS or whatever you want to call it so yeah <laughs> Honda Accord hatch um, fairly similar body to a A86 not exact same but uh, pretty pretty close um, I've seen a few people paint these Panda, and some people actually confuse them for 8.6s. According to uh, in-game models and badging, the Hakumai features the same 1.4 liter twin cam inline 4 as the Blista Compact. It also has the famous invariable valve timing, clearly a mockery of uh, Honda's VTEC. However, what I think is 1.4 is a bit small for a sedan, and the smallest offering on the real life car was only 1.6 liters. However, don't let this inflation fool you. This car shares a lot of traits of the Blisters engine, including its high revving motor and very peppy traits. In fact, when I was being chased by the police, they called this thing a sports car on the radio. So you know, it's quick. Speaking of quick, you want those 0 to 60? 10.5 seconds. That's pretty good for an 80 sedan. And considering the uh, 0 to 60 time for the real life accord for Motor Week was about 9.6, which is, by the way was a 4 speed automatic, that's pretty accurate and pretty good for an 80s family sedan. Now, how's the car handle? Honestly, it handles pretty good due to the floaty nature of the of the game's handling, this car can somehow pull off pseudo-style drifting and power slides quite nicely. However, it does suffer from the usual understeer and a little bit of wheel spin in tight corners. Other than that, pretty decent little car. I found it's an excellent vehicle for police chases and vehicle races. I did a rhyme there. I'm pretty cool. Now you've probably noticed I forgot to talk about the elephant in the room here. The obvious pop-up headlights. <laughs> no, 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 sorry James, we're not gonna play that song. I, you, you know what I said about that song, James. We can't play it. Guys, look, I'm so funny because I'm loud. <laughs> yes. Being based on an older Accord and prayed that this car features pop-up headlights. Although there isn't really an animation for them, they just literally pop up and pop down. If you leave the car lights on and exit the vehicle or shut off the vehicle, they will stay up even when the car is turned off. One thing I forgot to mention is the special variant driven by the Albania mob out of Bohan. The Albanian variant features several cosmetic additions including a lovely red paint job, Beer spoiler with a functional high stop lamp, side skirts, dual tip exhaust, and a front splitter. Changes are cosmetic only, and the special versions do not have any like speed or handling differences as opposed to the standard model. For context, they also drive red and black two tone panda style Karen Fudos. Well, there you have it 1987 Nika Hakumai. Probably one of the coolest 80s cars to come out of Liberty. Stay tuned for more reviews from The City That Never Sleeps. Well, there you go. Um, I'll be honest with y'all. Editing in GTA 4 is a bit different than 5. It, I mean, I, I, editing is the easy part. Recording is the hard part because the game doesn't tell you when it's recording or how long it's recorded. Um, so I found myself having a bunch of clips that are like 7 seconds long and I'm like, well, I'm not going to do that. It's pointless. But I found out if I reduce the number of cars on screen, it drastically increases how long I can record clips for. So I was going from like, say, 10 seconds max to about a whole minute. And I can work with a minute. A minute's good. That's fine.
So I, I'm slowly figuring out how to edit stuff in this, in this, or record stuff in this game. And I'm looking forward to do more. Currently, I don't have a mob in your soul like I said before. I'm not probably going to get one because... Um... I have other ways of, uh, you know, removing the hoods of cars. I could just crash them enough until they remove themselves, I guess. Um, plus, I'm afraid if I install a mod menu, it might break the game where I won't be able to use the uh, editor. So, I'm going to go ahead and just stick with the vanilla game and uh, try my best here to make some reviews. I was surprised I still had enough footage at the end of the video to actually have a uh, off the script bit here. So I'm, 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 I'm actually impressed. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was a pretty good review. You know, I think I did a good script here. I just was a bit disappointed about the footage itself. But uh, hopefully next video will be a little bit better. So I'm slowly trying to get back into making these videos again because I'm doing nothing but my summer car on my YouTube channel. So I figure I might want to diversify my content a little bit here, bring back some of the old stuff people like. I know people don't want to probably hear about GTA, GTA anymore, so I thought, why not talk about GTA 4? Because, in hindsight, GTA 4 is a much better game than 5, so, yeah. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. I'll provide links to the music and other stuff in the description. Uh, peace out, my dudes.